small frail form shifts behind me and I turn from the cloud to see my son's head lift from the mat where he sleeps. He smiles and points. Another day has begun for us and we will see what is to come. Everything seems to move slower when it is hot. A haziness sets into minds and clarity of thought is harder to hold. At midday, my husband returns from his work in the camp. He is exhausted and feeling unwell. I have never seen him so overcome by the heat and it concerns me. He tells me that today I must take our sacrifice, that he is unable. This has never been my role and he can see the alarm in my eyes. Do not be concerned. You must go through the gate. You can see it now, there. See the purple, scarlet, and blue flying in the wind? Through there you will enter the court and approach the bronze altar. This is where you will bring a sacrifice. I have the finest selected, and it is tied to the tent post outside. Before I can think, my feet are moving toward the door. Blinking in the sunlight, I can see that in the heat of the day, a large goat tied to a tent post has sought out a small amount of shade. He is the finest selection, a large, sturdy male with a silky coat. I release his tie and continue. There is a trail worn from our tent door to the gate of the tabernacle. Though the sand blows constantly and the ground shifts, the path has been traveled by my husband day after day. I follow his impression in the ground, with the goat walking dutifully behind me. As I near the gate, my pulse quickens and the questions burden my heart again. I push them aside along with the beautifully woven scarlet and blue curtains, then find myself standing in the court. I recognize the strong aroma of the altar ahead. We can always smell the faint fragrance of the sacrifices from our tent when the wind blows east. Aaron, the priest, is next to the altar. I have seen him before and know him well in the camps. He and his son serve here, offering sacrifices for the people. God has adorned them in beautiful clothing, fit for servants in the tabernacle, robes of linen, a turban, and a golden crown. Aaron turns to me and reaches his hand to accept the tie, which leads the goat. He examines the offering for any imperfections and finding it worthy, prepares to make a sacrifice. My eyes wander past the altar to the tent within the court. Above, the cloud. He is dwelling, always dwelling. He is before me, closer than ever before. His power I have seen. He has led us out of Egypt into this wilderness, fed us, given us drink, and dwelt among us. He has freed us from physical pains, and we have endured. Why does our God free physical bondage and leave something wanting from within? What is this need that I feel? He must know. Manna provides for our bodies, but what is lacking in my soul? He is dwelling among us, but he is always just out of reach. We have placed our faith in such a mystery for this wilderness. My legs and feet can tread along, but my heart is heavy. I need relief. With our sickness and pain, we long for something in our hearts, for something more than where we will set up a tent and what we will fill our stomachs with. Something. I am startled as a hand firmly grabs me by the wrist. I realize that in my pondering, I have stepped further into the court. In a mirrored basin, I see myself, a furrowed brow and lips still parted in the awe of wondering. Aaron holds my arm and stands firm in the space between the cloud and me. He has a fierceness in his eyes and his hold makes me believe that he knows all that my heart desires to do. An invisible argument plays between us. In a desperate moment, I realize that this is the time to make my plea. May I go into him? I ask quietly, but with assurance and deep conviction. He with deep resolve and no resignation answers me. It is not possible. He releases me and walks back to the altar where the goat still stands. Once there, he continues. Want for nothing. This is as it should be. God's design is not flawed. He understands all that you are. He created you. Whatever it is within you that wants to go into him, he designed. Why would he give me this desire if it is not possible for me to ever know him more closely? We all wait expectantly as he reveals more and more. Think of your ancestors who looked to a day when freedom would be found, and here you stand, out from the very bondage they were under for so long. 
Do not allow your desires to drive how you see him working. We cannot fully see our need for him at this time. I need him to heal my son. I need to be nearer to God to trust his ways. We cannot see what we truly need from him until he shows us. I see what is before me. He has placed me here to serve. Day after day I make offerings to God. He has made it clear that cleansing for us must come through sacrifice, a sacrifice of blood. I have spilled the blood of many animals and performed ceremonies for the cleansing of us all. God has given me a similar occupation. It is the same day after day, and a life is at stake as well. Tell me, how do you carry on without defeat? It is his provision for me. We know what is required for his presence to remain here with us. His glory is all-encompassing and cannot be contained in our minds. I rest in what he has given us for today. I offer a sacrifice and today I am at peace because God has shown me the way to be cleansed and dwell with him. For now, that is my focus and desire. He led the goat to the altar and waited for me to approach. I walk to the altar and lay my palm upon its head between the horns. I closed my eyes and recalled my doubts and fears I felt toward the Almighty God. Sadness overcame me as I could see the need for this animal to be sacrificed for my sin. Then calm, for knowing the sacrifice was acceptable to cleanse me before him today where I stand. Aaron spills the blood of the goat. I turn and walk back through the curtain of the gate toward my tent. My eyes fix on the horizon and I can see Pharaoh in great pursuit being drowned in a mountainous wave from the Red Sea. I can see Egypt laying vacant of any of God's people. I can see my childhood there and it being all I had ever known. The cloud, this wilderness, my husband, my son, are all I know now. Someday, I will look upon the horizon in a new light and I will know something new. And just like today, what I know at that time will be enough because it will be his provision for me. What he provides is always enough.